to win the seven races of the International Cross Country Snowmobile Federation and the prestigious St. Paul to Winnipeg race would stretch more than 2,000 miles, farther than the distance from Chicago to Los Angeles or from Minneapolis to Mexico. Every mile of the way is a struggle for man and machine to simply survive. The odds are three to one against even finishing a single race, and at least 200 to one against winning. But someone will win, and win more races, and earn more ICCSF championship points than anyone else. He'll be the champion, the best cross-country snowmobile race driver in North America. The season begins in December at the 250-mile North Dakota Governor's Trophy Run, the first race on the circuit. Prize money totaling $10,000 attracts 180 drivers who will battle it out in the snow-filled ditches from Bismarck to Carrington and on to Grand Forks. When the sleds reach the county road ditches, the race gets down to cases. rocks take their toll of skis, spindles, tracks and suspensions. And by the end of the first day, 95 machines are out of the running. Only 85 sleds, less than half the starters are still in the running for the final dash to Grand Forks. Leading the survivors into Grand Forks is Brian Nelson of Wilmar, Minnesota, aboard his John Deere liquidator. Nelson's total elapsed time for the two-day race was five hours, 24 minutes, 54 seconds. His victory was worth $2,500 plus 30 points toward the year-end championship crown. Next stop is Balsam Lake, Wisconsin. 150 drivers gather at the starting line to take a shot at the $5,000 first prize money. Among them is North Dakota winner Brian Nelson, who gets an assist with his equipment from mechanic Hubert Pixon. Nelson and his Enduro Team Deer teammates, as well as Team Arctic, are among the pre-race favorites. The winner will be the driver who covers the 12 laps around the 18 and a half mile course laid out on Balsam Lake in the fastest elapsed time. The glassy smooth surface is quite a contrast to the ditches of North Dakota and drivers put the hammer down and let the rooster tails fly. Speeds in excess of 90 miles an hour are recorded on radar. At the end of the eighth lap, Nelson makes a refueling stop and gets encouragement from his pit crew. Young Steve Sperry, aboard number 58, also stops for fuel, and the two drivers hit the lap counting gates virtually tied for the lead. With only two laps remaining, the race boiled down to a duel between Nelson, Sperry, and Tom Otte of Randolph, Minnesota, who moved into third position to challenge the leaders. But it was 16-year-old Sperry of Minneapolis who flashed across the finish line first. Nelson's second place finish added 29 points to his championship total. And Audie barreled his liquidator across the line one minute behind Nelson. Good for third place and 28 championship points. The South Dakota Governor's Cup was the third stop on the circuit. A two-day, 250-mile run from Aberdeen to Mobridge and back to Aberdeen with a $3,000 check waiting for the winner. By race time, snow was falling heavily. Snow that covered goggles and cut visibility to near zero. Snow that made ditch running softer but slower. Snow that drifted and sucked up snowmobiles, leaving drivers stranded along the course. Fifty-six machines that started the race, only 65 crossed the finish line. 
And it was Chuck Anderson of Hawley, Minnesota, on a Polaris who took the checkered flag for the win. Next on the tour was the big one, the St. Paul to Winnipeg International 500. The I-500 is the longest race of all, stretching almost 600 miles across the worst terrain winter can create. The $10,000 first place prize money attracts a field of 385. Included are the top racing teams, as well as hundreds of independent drivers anxious to test their skill and courage against the pros. The first day of the four-day race runs from St. Paul to Alexandria. The machines leave St. Paul in waves of 10, three minutes apart. One machine, apparently suffering from indigestion, needs a little help from the driver to get going. Once in the open country, drivers open throttles as wide as conditions allow. Stacy Redmond of Mason City, Iowa, powers his liquidator on the straightaway. Abe Coop of Steinbach, Manitoba, does the same on his John Deere liquefier. Number 51 is Glenn Wasmuth of Battleford, Saskatchewan. The torrid pace eliminates an incredible two-thirds of the machines. Zutz and Robert Prezekwist finished 1-2 at the end of the first leg. Brian Nelson was in third place, 12 minutes behind the leader. The survivors of the first day leave Alexandria on the second leg to Walker, a distance of 125 miles. Conditions were good and drivers hoping to move into contention piloted their machines more than 60 miles an hour in the ditches. 70 to 80 miles an hour where the race route was marked up on the country roads. On the course, duels between individual drivers take place, like this one between number 30, Alan Stern from New London, Wisconsin aboard a liquidator and an unidentified Polaris driver. Sometimes the result is disastrous. powers his machine through the ditches using a unique stand-up driving style, stopping only to check on another driver who crashes. Zutz and Prozekwa strengthen their hold on the one-two positions at the end of the second day. Nelson slips into fifth place, trailing Zutz by almost an unsurmountable 25 minutes. Second place Prozekwis challenges teammate Zutz for the lead. Nelson speeds his liquidator from the starting line, determined to chop down Zutz's lead by the time the machines reach Thief River Falls. Behind the leaders, Craig Bjorkland of Isanti, Minnesota, Roger Ebert of Minneapolis, and Gene Jetvig of Hawley, Minnesota are rapidly making up time. 
As the flag waves in the finishers at Thief River Falls, Prozequis has overtaken Zutz and moved into first place by eight minutes. And while Nelson had moved up from fifth position to fourth, he trails by 14 minutes and 11 seconds with just one day of the race remaining. Only 76 sleds start the last leg to Winnipeg. But on the final day, on 134 miles of frozen ditches and snow-covered fields between Thief River Falls and Winnipeg, something unbelievable happens. Brian Nelson roars his liquid-cooled John Deere across the blurred Canadian landscape at breathtaking speeds. He drives on the edge of disaster, chopping the seconds and minutes off the leader's time. Nelson drove his liquidator to the checkered flag in Winnipeg in the incredible time of two hours, 51 minutes, 22 seconds. He won the I-500 by the slimmest of margins, just 32 seconds. Well, it was rough. The snow was real hard. Everything worked perfect. The sled ran good all the way. I don't know, I just thought I wanted, wanted to go harder, I guess. I don't know, it's hard to say. This is the biggest one of all, you know, this is, there's nothing that compares to it. Did you find that the physical exercise really made a difference this year? Oh, definitely. There's no way you could ride like this if you weren't in shape. How did that liquid cooled engine work? Good, it ran good all the way. No Never problems. No. John Deere, they, they give a person a lot of motivation. There we go. A check for $10,000 to Brian Nelson from Wilma, Minnesota. say thank you to everybody involved, uh, my coach, uh, Mr. Al Anderson, and uh, my mechanic, Hubert Fixon, and uh, everybody else involved, thank you. The next stop on the ICCSF circuit, Sauk Center, Minnesota, is the home of the Dairyland 100. 158 drivers place their machines on the starting line. By now, Nelson has established himself as the man to beat. Racers left the starting line in flights of 10 and headed out across a frozen lake toward the finish line 180 miles away. Early in the race, it was apparent that conditions were ideal and that to win, a driver would have to average about 60 miles an hour, even in the ditches. Ditch racing is Tom Otte's specialty. Otte figured from the start this was his race, and if anyone was going to beat Nelson, he would do it. And do it, he did flashing across the finish line in three hours and five minutes, averaging 58.4 miles an hour. Otty pocketed $4,680 for his effort. But Nelson, with his incredible feel for his machine and consistently skillful driving, once again drove to a top money spot, finishing fifth just a little over four minutes behind Otty. Well, I didn't have any trouble, just run the whole race without any trouble. I had to never got off the seat except for the gas stops. I like the ditches better. A little more jumping, the rougher the riding, the better I like it. The action swings back to Canada. The International 250 from Regina, Saskatchewan to Minot, North Dakota proves to be a John Deere race from the start. Drivers battle it out over the toughest course of the season. Of the 241 machines that started the race in Regina, only 93 make it to mine it. And in the end, eight of the top 10 spots belong to John Deere drivers. The incomparable Brian Nelson does it again. 
driving his liquidator to victory in first place money of more than $5,000. Ron Reimer of Steinbach, Manitoba was third. And Nelson had beaten friendly rival Tom Otte at his own game, ditch racing. Otte was fourth. The 200-mile Eagles Heartland Grand Prix is as tough as any race on the Federation schedule. 102 drivers leave the starting line in flights of 10. event takes the racers over lakes, down ditches, and through miles of winding, treacherous wooded trails. Bob Enns, aboard his liquidator, took a wrong turn in the early running and had to play catch-up right from the start. When the machines reached the 30-mile wooded stretch, they were forced to slow down and that gave Enns the opportunity he needed to catch frontrunners Brian Nelson, Stan Hayes, and Doug Dennert. Enns blasted past the leaders on the winding trails, took the lead, and never let go. He crossed the finish line in the winning time of three hours, 43 minutes, five seconds to collect $6,300 on his 25th birthday. He had beaten the best cross-country drivers in the country. Enns was followed across the line three minutes later by Brian Nelson. Nelson's second place finish gave him a virtual stranglehold on the ICCSF championship title. I went through the course without too much problems and uh, got the lead there uh, by the second gas stop and uh, just got in. I didn't know until the banquet really that uh, I had won it, but I was you pretty. Won it on your birthday. And I won it on my birthday. <laughs> the icy surface of Mill Lacks Lake, Minnesota was the last stop of the season. The 200 racers who thought the two-day, 300-mile dash around the edge of the lake would be a piece of cake soon found out differently. All along the race route, monstrous ice heaves and snow drifts caused fast-moving sleds to lose control. At the end of day one, Guy Usseldinger on an Arctic cat holds a slim lead over the ever-present Brian Nelson. With only one 100-mile lap left, Nelson put the hammer down and barreled across the lake at speeds in excess of 90 miles an hour. It looked like another typical Nelson come from behind win. He flashed across the line with the fastest lap time of the day, covering the 100-mile course in one hour, 12 minutes, three seconds. But it wasn't quite good enough to catch winner Uzzeldinger of Stephen, Minnesota, whose total time for the two days beat second place Nelson by less than two minutes. With one ski missing, Bob Enns, fresh from his win at Eagles Heartland, guns his liquidator to the checkered flag and takes fourth place. The grueling journey is over. With 2,000 miles of torturous driving behind them, John Deere drivers had finished with an incredible five victories, three second places, and numerous other top 10 finishes. Tom Otte finishes with 85 ICCSF championship points for fourth place. Canadian Bobby Enns finishes the season with 100 championship points, good for third place in the final standings. Enduro Team Deer Driver Brian Nelson's record is an unbelievable three wins, three seconds, and a fifth in eight starts. Nelson's victory string gives him 173 total points. He has won more prize money than any other cross-country snowmobile racer has ever won before. Brian Nelson, ICCSF champion, the champion to challenge.